So we haven't hooked up a real ray tracing tool yet for Dynamo, but somebody was asking about doing a glare study, so I thought I'd give it a shot with just using basic vector math, and uh, not even vector math, just sort of transforms, and see what we could do. So I set up a little environment here, and this is in the massing environment because I'm going to place some points. You could do some other stuff so that you could do it in the project environment, but just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to show it this way. So what I've got is I've got my basically hand-built geometry here with my mass forms and I've got a little floor plate that would just sort of symbolize what the what the ground level looks like and maybe some surrounding buildings. So I can look at what's going to happen if you've got the sun bouncing off of some surface and then where its first bounce is going to hit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first turn on my sun path and I'm going to just continue with the current settings and then I'm just going to turn on a particular sun setting for here. So let's say it's a, a still uh, at the spring equinox. Let's do that. And so now we can see I've got my sun path. And so what I want to do is I want to bounce a ray or a bunch of rays from the sun point down onto the surface and then down somewhere else. So in order to do that, I've got my definition hooked up here in Dynamo. I'm just going to maximize this for a second so we can see it. And what it needs for inputs is, uh, what it needs for inputs are, uh, it needs a face that's going to be reflecting the sun, how many sampling points I'm going to do on that surface, uh, the surface that's going to be receiving the glare study, and it's going to actually just need to pick that sun vector off of the view that I have. And uh, I also have another tool here just so I can inspect the bounces a little bit closer. So I'm going to pick out those different elements right out of my screen here. So surface that's reflecting the sun. Let's get my little uh, concave surface here and I'm going to pick that. And you can see now it just says what the element ID is for that guy right here. And then number of sampling points we'll go with 30. That's fine. It's actually going to be a 30 by 30 grid. I've done two different ones so that I can either do a UV grid or a I mean a, a regularized grid or a random set so that it just does a random distribution of points and they either both have their qualities. Surface is receiving glare so I'm just going to pick the ground plane first and use sun path from current view. So I just click that and it registers the spring equinox here from this view and I'll show you the inspecting the individual bounces in a second. So I can just, I'm just going to run this automatically, run automatically and run just so that we can get some more dynamic interactions. It's going to take a second for it to just create all the geometry that's going to come along with this because it's a 30 by 30 grid. It's kind of a hell of a lot of points. So just give that a second to percolate through. And once it creates them, they actually modify much faster than they are created. So here I've got the points that were just created that represent the intersection point of the bounced rays from this surface and then intersecting down onto this ground plane here. So basically I'm going to get myself a one bounce ray tracer here. And you know it's kind of a poor man's ray tracer at this point. We're going to add a ray tracing uh, node to Dynamo but we just haven't done it yet. So what it's doing right now is it's actually taking the incident angle from the sun vector and then it is revolving that vector around a normal line that is coming out from any particular point. And we can see that, I'm just illustrating with this line, one particular ray of the many. So you can see it's passing through one of these points and I can move around that one sort of sample that traces that line. So if I move this guy around, you can see this moves that, that one sampling point to different spots on the surface just to illustrate which each one of these do. So now I'm just going to walk through a little bit of what this definition does. <coughs> so I've got my surface that is reflecting the sun, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it up into uh, a UV grid. And I have this one just in case I want to swap out and do a random grid rather than a, a regularized grid. And for every point on that surface, what I'm going to do is I'm going to evaluate uh, a UV point on it, turn it into an XYZ coordinate, 
and I'm also going to evaluate the normal. And what that means is I'm just going to uh, derive a perpendicular point from any point on that face. So that's different than saying I'm going to come out horizontally from any one of those points. I'm going to come out uh, at perpendicular to any single point on that face. And that's just what a normal value is. And then down here, what I've got is I've got my sun vector. So what this means is that assuming for a moment that you've got uh, a sample point from 0, 0, 0 in your coordinate space. So I'm going to say, I'm going to add myself a little watch node here so we can inspect these pieces as we go along. So if I'm at 0, 0, 0 and I go out 22, negative 65, and 71 in coordinate space, I'm going to get a line that goes out to the sun. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add that line, that vector, to every single point on the surface that I've designated as my glare surface. So I've got the XYZ coordinate that comes out from my face, surfaces reflecting the sun. There's a bunch of points along that, and I'm going to add another watch just so you can see what's coming out of that. It takes a second just to build that list. So here are my 960 points that are spilling out of my Evaluate UV. So these are all of my sampling points that I'm going to check for reflection. So every one of those guys is now going to have added to it that sun vector. And that means that for every point on that surface, I get uh, an incident sun angle. Well, now that I have an incident sun angle for every one of those points on the surface, if I take a straight line or a perpendicular line that comes out from every one of them, that is the surface normal, and I rotate it, I rotate that line around that normal line, I can essentially get my reflection. I can get a 180 degree ro ro uh, rotation, which is using my rotate transform node. Then I can get a reflected path of that vector off of my surface. So here I have my rotate transform, which takes an origin, an axis, which basically just gives me a line to rotate around. And I'm going to rotate it uh, 180 degrees. And just so you know, um, there's also an angle node here. Uh, the Revit API works entirely in radians for angles. So pi radians is going to be 180 degree rotation. You can also do 180 degree angle. We have an angle node that just does a conversion essentially. So if I add a watch node here, you can take a look at what's spilling out of that guy. 180 degree rotation gives you pi. I can just put in pi anyway. So, because who doesn't like pi? So I take my rotation, I've rotated my point, and now I can make a line that goes from every one of those points that I'm sampling on the surface and the rotated vector line, the sun vector line, and it gives me this resulting um, line that goes from the sun to the surface. I mean from the sun, not from the sun to the surface, from the surface to the reflected line. And from there I'm just going to derive an intersection between that reflected line and my target face, which in this case is my floor plane. So here's the surface that's ref the, that is receiving the glare. I take that face and I use a curved face intersection. So now I have this line, and in computer ease you call those things curves. Curves is sort of a catch-all for any sort of linear arc-like or spline-like element. So I'm intersecting that curve with that face. I'm getting the resulting intersections. and then I'm plopping a point on the end of it, I'm doing some processing of the lists that come out of there to do it. And then the last thing here is, you know, this individual bounce tool. So I was looking at individual bounces off of the face, just so that I can sort of see what it's doing. Uh, and that's feeding into basically taking that big 960 point list, and it just picks off it gets from list an index number. So just to show you what that means again, if I'm going to throw another watch 
on here. If I look at that list, I've got, you know, a gigantic number of points that are coming out. And if I wanted to visualize them all with lines, it would be a, a god-awful mess because I just have a huge number of those lines coming off. And I can actually just visualize that here with a Watch 3D node. If I put in a Watch 3D and I look at that huge list of lines that are coming out, this is make a line from each surface to the reflected sun vector. So if I just take a look at that whole list, um, it's just a little uh, messy, shall we say. This is not, you know, wildly helpful because it's showing every one of those 960 lines reflected off of the surface. And, you know, maybe that is something that you want to see. But uh, I don't want to know that much information. It's just not helpful. So what I'm doing instead is using my get from list to just pick out individual ones of those. So here's the whole list of points, but I use my get from list to just pick off an individual group of lines. One line that comes from the sun, one line that intersects with the surface. So in the end, what I get from all of that is I get the ability to bounce the sun off of this surface and see how it reflects onto this surface. And I can use this definition to look at other things too. So now that I have my thing hooked up, um, I can say, okay, well right now what I'm doing is I'm looking at this reflected glare pattern off the first bounce off of this surface for what it's going to look like at noon. So I've got my sun path here. I could also look at what it looks like at mm, 3 in the afternoon, 2 in the afternoon. Let's try that. And it's going to recalculate all those points and it's going to move them around. And after it's done that, I'll get a another study, basically, for what it looks like at 2 in the afternoon. And there it is. So we have, you know, this is the 2 in the afternoon. We saw before that it had a just slightly different pattern. So what I can look, look at this and I can see, you know, predictably enough, I've got a, a concave surface. It's making sort of this moving uh, death ray of sun focus across the plaza here. And what I could also do is I could say, okay, well now that I've looked at what it's going to do here on this plaza surface, um, maybe what I want to actually do is look at what it's going to do on an adjoining building face. So I'm actually just going to turn off run automatically for a second. And uh, just to make it more interesting, I'll put in a, a closer building so I can look at what that surface is going to do. So in order to re-point my definition, I'm going to turn off a couple of these things because I don't need them running in the background for this. Turn off my watches. Because they're not helping anybody anyway. And we've got a bug actually in the watches where they're kind of slow, so we're fixing that right now. So I've got my surface that is receiving glare, and it's currently bouncing down to this surface, which is the ground plane. I'm going to change it to be this sort of adjoining building. And see, I just changed that selection. And so now if I run this guy again, rather than bouncing my light down onto this surface, it's going to look at the intersection point with this surface. And so you can see it right here. Where is he? There he is you can see the glare pattern that's going to be happening here on this surface now. And again, I can look at this at different times of day. Let's see what it looks like maybe at, you know, 1130 in the morning. And I'll just run it again. And you can see it just pop right back over here. So I can see how that first bounce glare pattern is going to happen. So this isn't everything that you might want it to be. So, you know, it would be nice to probably have all of the reflected rays that are bouncing off of this surface and that bounce onto itself and then bounce onto the next surface because uh, that will also give you more information. But this is an interesting good uh, sort of first start at how you could start using something like basic geometric operations to start doing some some early analysis on your forms.
And I'll post these definitions and this model and uh, have some fun with it. And uh, hope this was helpful. Thanks. Bye.